So I'm Martin de Ronde. I'm commercial director at uh, Gorilla, which means I'm responsible for PR marketing side, and I'm also involved in the conceptualization process to a certain extent, as far as the marketing and PR side is uh, is concerned. Um, today we're presenting a game called Shell Shock, and Shell Shock uh, NAM 67 is a third-person action war game set in the Vietnam War, where you take on the role of a, a grunt, a GI, who basically has to survive his tour of duty in the year 1967 in Vietnam. When we started working on uh, the game, we, we, we already wanted, knew and decided it was going to be an action war game. And then we obviously had to come up with a setting, and our preference was Vietnam, because everybody else was doing World War II games. And we really wanted to do Vietnam. And the reason why we wanted to do Vietnam was that all the other war games out there on the market were very clean representations of, of war, whereas we felt war is, war is hell. And that's what we wanted to get across in the game, the horrors of war, the fact that the war is dirty, the fact that the war sees all kinds of atrocities going on. And I think there's no better war, yeah, that sounds a bit strange, but there's no better war than the Vietnam War to use as a setting for that kind of premise that we wanted to create. Yeah, you basically, you start off in a base camp, which is similar to what happened in real life. There was a base camp uh, for, the, for, the, for the soldiers from which they were sent on their respective missions. And um, you're basically, from the base camp, you're sent on, on various missions, uh, which are, are initially start out with the usual stuff, so that's patrols, and then you become involved in more and more encounters with enemy forces, uh, whether it's Viet Cong or not Vietnamese army, so you see large battlefield sequences uh, taking place. And as you progress through the game, you start to progress through the ranks of the army as well, your superiors start to take notice of you if you perform really well, and then slowly you get asked to become a member of the special forces, and then you get sent on various other missions which are different from the standard soldier missions that you would normally encounter, and that it's when the gameplay also starts to change. So initially you're going on a lot of run and gun missions and then eventually you start to go on more stealth-like infiltration missions. So there's a nice mix of different missions in, uh, in the game as well. I think what you really want to, uh, what we really set out to achieve uh, when we started is the atmosphere of the war and that atmosphere was characterized by loneliness to a certain extent, chaos. Um, chaos obviously derived from the fact that from one moment to the next you could find yourself in a very idyllic a jungle environment with birds whistling etc and suddenly there was an ambush and you're being fired upon by an invisible enemy. So all those aspects we wanted to get across but at the same time we had to balance gameplay because there's no fun in recreating the true Vietnam War which sometimes involved you not seeing enemies for days and days and days and being on patrols. I don't think anybody would want to play a game where you would basically be walking across fields for days and days and days. So we had to go for this balancing uh, in trick. And um, I think what we've achieved is, is this fine balance between actual action gameplay and still the atmosphere from the Vietnam uh, War, uh, the way it was really experienced by, by the, uh, the actual soldiers in the war. In order to recreate that atmosphere of being on your own, being sent to a country which, which you've never been to before and fighting a war which you really didn't know what it was for, um, we really wanted to focus as a result of that on that one man's journey. And that's why we didn't uh, want to pay, um, want to basically break the development process into two different tracks. One of the one part of the team focusing on multiplayer, and one part of the team focusing on single player. We really wanted to try and get the best out of that single player experience. So there's going to be no multiplayer and no online options for the game. Torture, public executions, street executions, executions of innocent people, um, bombardments of, of villages were part and parcel of the Vietnam War, and they were atrocious in many ways. What we then didn't want to do is uh, take that and multiply it by 20 and have every single level full of atrocious things because that wasn't true representation of the Vietnam War. Those things happened, but also many other things happened. So I think that's the, the balance we were looking for. Don't overdo the atrocious elements, but do show them. Don't shy away from any atrocities unless you hit a certain constraint. If you're not going to do anything uh, which involves killing children, uh, uh, things like that, because that's really something we felt wasn't really necessary. We wanted to give people a good impression of what the war was like. Many atrocious things happened, but it doesn't mean that you want to show all those atrocious things. There's 11 or 12 missions in total, and average mission length is, I would say, um, one hour, one hour and 15 minutes. 
Minimum is 45 minutes, maximum one and a half hour. But it also obviously depends on whether you know where you're going, what, whether you know what to do, and how good a games player you are. There's not so much secondary objectives, but there's areas to explore. So in the base camp, you may hear from one of your fellow soldiers that the uh, bunker complex you're about to hit in the, the, the upcoming mission may also um, contain some goods that you are interested in. So when you go into the bunker complex and you've killed all the enemies and fulfilled your primary mission objectives, you may decide to stay around for a little bit longer and try and find some of those elements. We are developing uh, the game for PlayStation 2, Xbox and PC uh, simultaneously because the engine is, is multi-platform within Guerrilla. Um, and the game is going to be released summer 2004, so uh, somewhere in the middle of this year. Well,